Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. It's Tuesday, time to talk about some new releases coming out this Friday, January 26th. By the way, I can't believe it's already the end of, uh, of January, but there's a bunch of stuff coming out this week. About 450 albums coming out this week. I got 12 on my list for today. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist we put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you go check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. Like I said in the intro, we're back to a normal release week. It's uh, about 450 albums coming out this week. I'm only going to talk about 12 on the show today. I will say that of the 12, six of them are part of the uh, Rhino Start Your Ear Off Right uh, series that uh, comes out every January. But there's something I don't talk about on the show today. Make sure you drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you're looking forward to picking up. And like always, if you're unable to find any of these in your local brick and mortar stores, they should all be available online. I'll put links, uh, links down below in the comment section for these 12 and a bunch of other ones I'm looking forward to this week. A couple of new releases I'm really looking forward to this week. The first one is The Smile, Wall of Eyes. This is their second studio album. It's going to run you about 30 bucks online. There's a standard black version of it, and there's a blue version, which is, is, is the uh, indie exclusive. So this is a side project of uh, Tom York from Radiohead. I absolutely loved their first album. Their first album came out, I think it was 2022 when their first album came out, and it's really interesting. It's like... Uh, rock mixed with like some post-punk stuff there's some uh progressive rock stuff on there there's some electronic on there also it's, like i said really fascinating album i really love that first one. i think it's one of the best albums of the last couple of years so i'm definitely looking forward to, to grabbing a copy of this new one this week and then you also got the new album from alkaline trio coming out this week it's, this is uh blood hair and eyeballs it's their 10th studio album it's gonna run you about 24 bucks online there's several versions of this one also there's a standard black version there's a bone and black version which is the indie exclusive and then there's a black bone and maroon version which i think is the exclusive off the, off of their website this album actually leaked a couple of weeks back online. I've been listening. I've listened to it several times uh, over at least the last like four or five days. I've been listening to it. I think this might be oh, at least one of Alkaline Trio's best albums, if not their best album. Um, you know, absolutely. And I've never been a huge fan of Alkaline Trio. Just like casual stuff here or there. I, I love their album Damnesia. But I think this album really kind of encapsulates everything that the band has done over their career. Puts it all together in one album. Uh, like I said, this is uh, an album I'm, I'm, I've already listened to a couple of times. I can't wait to, to grab a copy of this week. I've already got it on pre-order at my local record store. You also got the latest album from the Menzingers coming out this week. This is some of it was true. This was actually released last October. And then uh, when it came out, it was only it only got a really limited vinyl release. I think it was on like a Coke bottle clear with like a black splatter. And then now you're getting a wider release of it this week. But this is their seventh studio album. It's going to run you about 20 bucks online. There is a black version that's coming out this week. And then there's also indie exclusive. I think it's going to be on red vinyl. I think I don't know if they call it like Ruby or something else, but it's red. It's going to be on red vinyl. Uh, so they're being that I've just recently started getting into over the last several months. I really enjoyed their last two albums. I haven't listened to the newest one yet. I know uh, Brad Cook produced both of those last two albums. He was also the producer on this one. So I'm uh, definitely, uh, I, I'm hoping for kind of a continuation of those last two. I need to go back and check out the earlier stuff also, but uh, definitely gonna, one I'm going to grab this week. And then the next album is one that's going to be, it's a reissue that I've had on my Discogs want list for the last several years. But this is Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. This is the original soundtrack. It's got, it's got a pricey, though. It's going to run you about 54 bucks online. This was originally released back in 2020. It's a 2LP release. It's being released through uh, Waxwork. Uh, it's the same uh, label that uh, that released it the first time. It's the score to the classic 1989 film, Jason Takes Manhattan, you know, which I'm a huge fan of. I, I've been a big slasher fan since I was a kid. I've always loved the Friday the 13th movies. I do enjoy this movie also. I'm probably one of the few people out there that really love Jason 10 also. But uh, this is one that uh, looks really cool, even though it's kind of pricey. You know, uh, you can get a, a, an older pressing uh, off of Discogs for a little bit less than what you can get the new release for. But packaging looks cool. It's not colored vinyl, even though it doesn't say what color it is. But, you know, it's uh, I, one I'll put on my want list. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll grab it this week. The next album is one that I was really surprised to see on the release list for this week. You know, it's something that's been out of print forever. I've been really waiting for this to get reissued. Of course, I'm just joking. This album has been pressed to death over the years, but this is Journey's Greatest Hits, released back in 1988. Uh, it's, a, of course, a compilation, one of the highest-selling compilations of all time. 2LP release, 
Uh, this thing's going to run about 38 bucks online. This thing sold a ton. I fit over 15 million copies. Uh, this album has sold since it was first released. You know, it's got uh, a bunch of great tracks from the band's first nine studio albums. You know, I'm not the biggest Journey fan. This is definitely a band that I'm, I'm good with just a greatest hits compilation. But, uh, you know, I already have a copy in my, in my collection. I picked it up during the uh, Walmart $15 sale a couple years back. So you got that coming out this week. And then uh, this, the, the next one I didn't really, ha- had never heard of before. I definitely need to go back and check it out. But this is Brett Michaels' A Salute to Poison. This was released back in 2000. I guess it was also reissued back in uh, 2007. Uh, this is going to run you about 28 bucks. I'm sorry, it's going to run you about 20 bucks online. And uh, this is going to be on black vinyl. I know the last time it came out, I was on black and splatter vinyl. So what this is, this is a what uh, Brett Michaels did. He went through and re-recorded a bunch of classic tracks from Poison. I'm not the biggest fan of re-recorded stuff. So I said I'll go back through and stream it and check it out. I did, I did play a couple of songs before I started recording. And, you know... The first couple of ones I listened to weren't that bad. Some of the other ones were I, I, not as great. You know, of course, you're never going to be able to recreate the magic that uh, he had uh, when, when those songs were first recorded. But uh, I think I, on a couple of them, he does a pretty a pretty okay job with. And then the last six albums I got on my list are all part of the Rhino Start Your Ear Off Right series that uh, started at the beginning of the year. This week is the the last week for, for that uh, that series this year, and this is the one week that I've really been looking forward to. The first release here is one I've had on pre-order since this uh, series was first announced. This is Black Sabbath, Sabbath Buddy Sabbath, released back in 1973. It was their fifth studio album. It's going to run you about 30 bucks online. This is going to be on a smoky vinyl. It's just like a... You know, almost kind of black and grayish kind of color. Looks really cool. I absolutely love this album. It's one of my favorite Sabbath albums of all time. It's also some of my favorite album artwork of all time. It actually looks cool. It sounds great. This is where Sabbath started getting a little bit more experimental with their music. Started uh, in- introducing some different sounds. Really, everything they did on this album absolutely worked. It's just an absolute masterpiece. I definitely put this up there. You know, Paranoid and Volume 4 probably will always be one and two for me, but uh, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath is right be- behind those two. And then the, the next one is Ray Charles Now Playing. So if you don't know anything about these Now Playing releases that they're doing, they're kind of like budget greatest hits compilations that they're doing. But uh, So this one's going to be on uh, light blue vinyl. It's going to run you about 20 bucks online. You know, Ray Charles, I get, you know, this is just 10 tracks. I'm across his great, incredible career. But for an artist like Ray Charles, I don't know how you can kind of boil down his entire career to just 10 tracks. Uh, this easily could have been spread out, you know, over two LPs and maybe done like a, a proper greatest hits compilation for him. I guess before I get to the next two albums, I guess I, I guess I should say that if you're looking for any of these Rhino releases, I'll put links down below to one of my local record stores if you want to grab a copy of them because, you know, they, they won't be available on, like, Walmart or, or, or Amazon or anything like that online. You can only grab them from your local record store. So uh, but all those are available online. So you, the next two are both Stevie Nicks releases. Neither one have ever been available on vinyl outside of the, uh, the box set that was released last year. The first one is Street Angel, released back in 1994. It's her fifth studio album. It's going to be on transparent red vinyl. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little more expensive than, than the other ones. This one's going to run you about 39 bucks online. This is a 2LP release. This is an album that, you know, I, I, I've, had, I've struggled with over the years because this is an album where... I think a lot of Stevie's, uh, you know, addiction problems were really catching up to her at this point in her life. Prior to to this album, she'd really been hands-on with the creation of her music and the writing and everything, but not really with this album. And, uh, you know, I think it really kind of, you could tell in the music. There are a couple of good tracks on here, but I think a lot of it is, is kind of forgettable. You know, it's definitely an album I, I won't pick up, but, uh, you know, like I said, it's worth streaming and checking out if you haven't listened to it in a long time. And then the second one is uh, Trouble in Shangri-La, released in 2001. It was her sixth studio album. It's going to be on transparent sea blue vinyl. Uh, this is also a double LP. It's going to run about 37 bucks online. This was the big, like, comeback album for Stevie. And, uh, you know, she was definitely hands-on with everything that went on with this album. It really showed, really came through in the music. Sold really well. Hit number five on the Billboard charts here in the U.S. And this is an album that I would put this one up with, you know, some of the great albums that she did in the 80s. It's just a fantastic album from beginning to end. And then the last two on the list are two more of those now playing co- compilations. So the first one is Zapp and Roger. This is going to be on Ruby Red Vinyl. It's going to run you about 21 bucks online. If you're unfamiliar with Zapp and Roger, one of the most influential funk bands of the 80s. You really got their break in the later part of the 70s playing with Parliament Funkadelic. Some really great stuff. 
really kind of a tragic band also. The band was started by four brothers, and then I think it was 1999, there was a murder-suicide between two of the brothers, ended the band's career, but they did so many great songs o- over their over their career that, um, you know, I, this is a great, this is a good uh, compilation, I think, to really kind of get into their, into their music, kind of get a feel for, for what they did in their great career. And then the last one is Curtis Mayfield now playing. This one's going to be on Grape Vinyl, which I've always fun, thought it was funny. You just call it purple. I don't know why they say grape, but this one's going to run you about 21 bucks also. Ten tracks from across his career. This is kind of like the, the Ray Charles uh, uh, compilation that's coming out. Ten tracks across his career easily could have been a 2LP release with all the great music that uh, Curtis Mayfield has released. Well, that's all you got for today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Make sure you drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you're looking forward to picking up this week. I think it's going to be a great week. Of course, I got that Black Sabbath on pre-order, like I said, for, for a long time. I'm definitely going to grab a copy of the, the new album from The Smile. I got the Alkaline Trio album on pre-order. I'll probably grab that Menzingers album. Maybe grab that Friday the 13th album if I can find it on sale somewhere. Maybe I'll grab a couple of those now playing compilations. I don't know. It's going to be an expensive week for me, I think. But uh, let me know what you guys are looking forward to picking up. Like always, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And that's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.